welcome to my channel. After four days being away, I'm finally back. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, I've been working on internet server issues and they have been thorny to put it mildly and have taken up all of my time and so I haven't been able to do any videos for four days. And finally, I got everything working and we're back to doing our thing. So, before I get into the news today, this is my daily news clips episode for today. Uh, and of course the news is old because I picked it out four days ago before I stopped doing videos. But anyway, uh, before I do that, I just want to thank you for coming to my channel and for supporting me despite the fact that I've disappeared for a little while. So thank you very much. And the first item that I have on the agenda for today is titled A Rare Win for Free Speech, the Stanford Internet Observatory Closes. Um, I have highlighted a little bit here, I'll read it to you, uh, but I want to make a comment also. After five years of pioneering research into the abuse of social platforms, the Stanford Internet Observatory is winding down. Its founding director, Alex Stamos, left his position in November. Renee DiResta, its research director, left last week after her contract was not renewed. One other, staff, uh, one other staff member's contract expired this month, while others have been told to look for jobs elsewhere, sources say. And during a frenetic period at the end of the Twitter files, I joined other site contributors like Andrew Lowenthal and Undead FOIA in focusing on SIO's Election Integrity Partnership as a possible key to a government-partnered content flagging scheme in the 2020 election. Their virility project seemed to perform a similar role in the pandemic. Reporters like Lee Fang, who sniffed around Stanford, Stanford even before the Twitter files, and Michael Schellenberger also dug in. Subscribers' patience with this not always thrilling, acronym-laden material helped us produce research, aiding both the Murphy versus Missouri Supreme Court case and Jordan's high-profile investigation. It's an interesting article. I'll say this uh, because, uh, I don't know, call me a cynic, okay? It says the Internet Observatory closed, and I have no doubt that's true, but we have often seen these things spin up with just a different name. So I wouldn't go, you know, uh, go out and celebrate with beers tonight because <laughs> the censorship of our views may not be over yet. Time will tell. Here's the second one. Oh, come on now. Stop that. Who's the big money bankrolling pro Hamas protests in the U.S.? You might be surprised. The Heritage Foundation's Oversight Project has launched a new website, colorrevolutions.us, that details the nonprofit organizations, academic and financial institutions, and foreign governments that have put financial resources behind the anti-Israel protests after the Hamas terrorist attack in Israel last October 7th. The New Venture Fund, a 501c3, nonprofit organization operating under the umbrella of Arabella Advisors has funded anti-Israel anti protests at Georgetown University and the George Washington University, both schools based in Washington, D.C. Numerous other organizations funded by major institutional left-wing donors are engaged in organizing anti-Israel or pro-Hamas protests and activities. For example, the website reports that billionaire funder of the left-wing causes George Soros Family Open Society Foundations have funded protest organizers, Jewish Voice for Peace, and U.S. Campaign for Palestinian Rights. Uh, I'm not going to read any more of this. You can read it yourself, but I mean, basically, it's a laundry list of what are called non-governmental organizations that survive off of the government funding that they get. And it's always been a source of great irony to me that we, the taxpayers, pay for 
these organizations that are dedicated to the destruction of our own country. There's just something really twisted about that. Activism uncensored. Thousands surround White House with two mile long red line banner for Palestine. The reason I chose this is because you may not be aware, but there is a group that is documenting protests and what they're doing is rather than, you know, like when you have a protest, um, TV will come and radio will come and reporters will come and they'll give you bits and pieces of it, the parts they want you to know about, but they won't give you the full story. What these guys are doing is capturing these protests from beginning to end on video. So you can watch them and you can make your own judgments about what's going on. So I thought that was interesting. The link will be in the description and you can follow up on that if you have a desire to. And you can see what the protests are really doing and compare that to what the news is reporting that they're doing. And finally, I have a Cheryl Atkinson uh, article. Records reveal FBI provided Dems with info on whistleblower testimony from weaponization hearing. Once again, we have another article showing us how corrupt the FBI is, that they're willing to give to Democrats only information about whistleblowers so that they can try to destroy the whistleblower. So that's the news for today. I'm going to start doing music videos now again, finally. Yay, I'm so excited. Oh man, I'm excited. But before I go, I do want to pray for you. I pray. Oh, I forgot. My shirt has nothing on it. See? No writing at all. My wife just bought me this. She liked it. She says it's cool. I don't know if it is or not, but uh, she bought it, so I wear it. That's how it works. <laughs> uh, I pray for you that you will have an overabundance of grace and joy and love and peace in your life. And that you will have the same for every single person that you love. This is the Vietnam era vet out.